the biggest question, Fuzzy, has been where is Sony's roadmap? Well, let me paint another picture for you, folks. I have the answer. I think Sony definitely has the answer. I don't think people want to hear what I have to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you consider a $400 million investment in a game that took eight years to make, there was a, according to Colin, a very toxic, I, I never heard of this, this terminology, a toxic positive workplace. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I've never actually kind of heard of that until Colin actually said it. So let's just talk numbers. Let, 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 let's get to the brass taxes of the conversation, if you will. A $400 million eight-year investment into Concord. Not good, folks. A $315 million investment into Spider-Man 2. Now, Spider-Man 2 is quite a great game. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't like it because it's very samey, I hear you. And you're not going to get any fight out of me. I like it. In fact, I liked it a lot. Now, I haven't beaten it yet, but that's because, well, there's only two hands and only so many hours in the day when you podcast five days a week and you take care of a home, things have to go to the wayside. So I didn't finish it, but I ultimately will. And I very much enjoyed Insomniacs. Well, it's it's their second iteration of the Spider-Man franchise, but third in the series when you count uh, uh, Miles Morales. Yeah. Um, but that was $315 million. Now, the only thing I can't say with a positive uh, you know, uh, pointed, uh, you know, conversation is whether or not that $315 million included advertisement. I don't think it did. I'm pretty sure that is the development cost of that game, right? Now, this is where we kind of get a little pointed because in the same framework that they acquired the studio making Concord, which was a you know notable addition to uh, PlayStation Studios, they also spent three point six billion dollars on Bungie. Now, mm -hmm. folks, I I'm here to tell you, let's just look at the three points of contention here. It's fuzzy, four hundred million dollar investment for Concord, three hundred and fifteen million dollar investment for Spider Man Two. Now, I don't know if it's sold enough to make that money back. But remember, that was only on, on the PlayStation. That was it. You know what I'm saying? It, was, you know, it, it wasn't on PC. It didn't do dual release. So I don't, I don't know what happens with that investment. And then, of course, you look at what happened with Bungie. Bungie right now is in disarray. They have leadership that was fired because of allegations. Mm -hmm. And again, those are not concrete because you know they're still investigating, but they were allegations by eight women within the company that's a big problem so that that person was fired then you have of course marathon being reported upon by very very pointed people in the industry one of which i don't even like to mention by name simply because it's like voldemort um <laughs> uh you, you you know it was reported that it's a mess the game mm-hmm this so ultimately, what what am I saying, folks? What what am I going on this long long winded rant for? Well, I think that kind of just paints the picture as to why there is no roadmap. I don't think Sony could afford one. I really think that they are adjusting how they make their games. They are adjusting how much they spend to sell their games, meaning their marketing. And I think that it is a ship that is, has a lot of holes that they're trying to figure out how to fill. And I think that ultimately is why you don't have a roadmap. Um, I don't know when we're going to get one. Um, there is a state of play happening supposedly tomorrow. I mean, that is the running rumor. It is supposed to be third party only from what I am hearing. There are a couple of you know remakes in there. And that's the other thing. What, what's going on with all these remakes? There have been a <laughs> bunch of them, and they continue to pop out. As a matter of fact, God of War, Ragnarok, just released onto PC. And you know what, folks? It didn't sell very well. And you know why it didn't sell very well? Well, because of that whole thing with PSN. Mm -hmm. They want those PSN numbers, and PC gamers, are the, they don't care. 
So they're not buying it. They're not playing it. As a matter of fact, it was a third less people playing God of War Ragnarok over the weekend than it was when the original God of War 2018 released on PC. Wow. And that is a freaking problem because they need the money. Fuzzy, let's get your thoughts and, and, and theories on this. A am I possibly onto something or do you have another theory? No, I, I think you're onto something because anytime you have that much invested investment tied up between the development costs and the acquisition costs of, you know, Firewalk and, and Concord in general, um, however much they spent, whether it's the, you know, the 400 million that we're hearing now, or even more so considering the acquisition cost being kind of considered a separate uh, amount, or just the billions of dollars that was thrown at Bungie to, to bring them in to help them with this games as a service or live service model that they were moving forward with, to only have them kind of burn through talent and burn through money uh, while one guy's up here buying cars, another guy can't keep his hands to himself kind of thing. And just a whole other mess of things of mismanagement and whatnot. Like the stuff that people always used to, you know, blame Microsoft for having you know, it was clear that mismanagement was also happening in the in the blue camp as well. So anytime you have all that money on the table with those investments, that takes money away from working on a twisted metal or working on, you know, or finishing up factions or or, or starting something new or, or bringing a, a SOCOM to, to realization kind of thing. You, you can't like it's not that we're saying Sony's broke by any means of the imagination, but they don't have the deep coffers that something like Microsoft has. Like Microsoft has hundreds of billions of dollars in like couch cushion money kind of thing. While Sony is a, you know, hundred billion dollar or uh, hundreds of billion dollar company, they don't have that extra cash flow readily available that they can just kind of pick out of their pocket. Like when they're picking out of their pocket, we're talking tens of millions or maybe hundreds of millions, but not hundreds of billions to, you know, filter into multiple projects. And and all the time that they're also paying to money hat these these third party ex timed exclusives and, and whatnot. So th they have a lot of hands in different cookie jars and just not having a solid focus on a particular avenue of games or a roadmap in general. Like we remember hearing first, it was like 10, it was supposed to be 10 games as a service. Then it became 12 games as a service. And then when Hiroki Totoki came in, it's like, nope, five or six. And, or, or, or we don't even know. We just know it was cut in half. And we think it's like five and Concord was one of them. And we got fair game. We got marathon, which marathon's even going through its transition because they had it originally as an extraction shooter and they brought in extraction shooter streamers, you know, like Escape from Tarkov and stuff like that. And all of those people at the end of that that test were like, nah, I wouldn't play this. Well, no, I'm not even interested. So if they re, you know, configured that game to now be a hero shooter, which we just saw fail in less than two weeks from, you know, Firewalk, which some of the talent there were former Bungie um, devs and things along those lines. So it's like, it just feels like everything is is upside down world over there. I don't know if it's lack of vision from, you know, Jim Ryan. I mean, he kind of got out of the way or maybe they threw him out the door quietly and made it seem like, oh, early retirement because he's tired of flying instead of just throwing him out the front door like they did with uh, Sean Layden. But it, it just feels like there's a, a, a massive fire that very few are talking about, like, I, I know you don't like talking about Jason, but he, he made mention about the whole thing with Bungie. And it's like, yep, that was supposed to be the better acquisition in Activision, according to some of those in the, the gaming media. And we see how that's turned out. And I remember hearing some of that same gaming media or some of those same influencers out there saying that, you know, why did Microsoft purchase things like Ninja Theory or why are they buying up all these studios? But yet when Sony purchased people that like like uh, Dirk Grigory would say, like people that nobody's ever heard of before or or like these these random teams that come out of nowhere. Now we see, well, maybe they were in a state of desperation just to focus on getting into this this games as a service niche, niche without really having a, a true uh, thought out plan or. It's just a matter of them being a, a, a group of mismanagement after the likes of Sean Layden and some of the people that were under him wound up leaving or being pushed out the door. Like the, the what was the one woman's name, uh, Dinah or, or Dana Ross or something like that, that uh, she used to do a lot of the like what Matt Booty used to do 
or what Matt Booty does now for Microsoft. She was doing that for for PlayStation. They kind of pushed her out the door as well. So it, it just feels like there's all this mismanagement going on, that toxic positive or positive toxic, uh, you know, atmosphere in the workplace. I've kind of seen some of that. And I, I, I talked about that with 3Bit yesterday uh, on Pixelated Echoes as far as how Sometimes you just want to keep your job and you want to keep the check coming in because yeah. you're not going to stand in the face of your boss that signs your check and say, this is a really bad idea. I mean, some people have the cojones to do that. And there are times where it's probably to your best interest because ultimately, you know, if this project fails, you're the one that's on the cutting block, probably not your boss. But I, I just get the feeling that there was that, that atmosphere where nobody's going to tell Herman Holst that maybe we should work better on these characters. Like I, they could have probably snuckingly, you know, made a better design. Like, oh, well, these are what you asked for. But, you know, I was just messing around and I saw what Overwatch had. And what if we had something a little more like the attractive <laughs> character balls that they have over at Overwatch or something and see if, you know, hopefully they don't push you out the door for, you know, breaking the rules or not following instructions. As long as you get the, t- the main task done, I don't think that that would be the case. But it, it just feels like nobody was willing to step up and counter all the bad stuff that they saw down the pike. And it's like, I, I don't know. I, I've been in that situation. There are times where I've opened my mouth and it probably didn't help my career in, in the long term. <laughs> but there's times where it's like, yeah, it's better for me to shut up because it's like, I'm, I'm not going to be the guy that, oh, well, now we make these changes and now it's all on my shoulders. So if it fails, yeah, I'm out the door. <laughs> if it succeeds, well, I, I, It'll just be like, well, good job, and I don't get the extra bonus or whatever type of deal. So it, it, it is a, I mean, the gaming industry itself is a tough work environment to begin with as far as the turnover rates, as far as the volatility where if a game doesn't succeed, chances are your doors and lights get cut off kind of thing. Uh, publishers don't really have the, I wouldn't say the attention span, but they don't have the patience nor the you know, the pockets in some cases are willing to have the, the patients with pockets to to reinvest or continue supporting a game. Like we can look at uh, companies like Ubisoft. They will take the extra time and money, even though sometimes to nauseum to make sure a game either succeeds or at least breaks even. Like look at all that they've invested in things like Ghost Recon, uh, the more recent one that they did where it didn't have the greatest launch in comparison to Wildlands. I think it was Breakpoint. Uh, yeah, same was, thing Breakpoint with, was was okay. Wildlands mm-hmm. was freaking amazing. Yeah. Exactly, and and things like Rainbow Six Siege, like at first that didn't seem like it was going to last very long, but they kept at it and and made it work. I mean, we went through three iterations of the crew before they kind of finally copied <laughs> Forza Horizon and and found some success, you know, in the multiplat space for that genre more so than like a Need for Speed kind of thing. So. There are some teams out there that are willing to to spend the time and the money. And Sony just, I, whether it's they don't want to have the pockets or they don't have the pockets in general, <laughs> they're not going to, I mean, obviously in 10 days, if they shut down Concord, even though they saw the writing kind of on the wall with the beta weekend being such a, a, a flat spot, let's say. I mean, if you're having a first party studio for something as premium as PlayStation only attract like 2,500 people on steam when you're doing a simultaneous launch on both you should probably reevaluate some things i mean maybe they saw some behind the scene numbers that were a little bit better on the console but to hear rumors that they only sold about twenty five thousand copies to make about a million dollars back after spending 200 to 400 million like that's insane like yeah i guarantee you if and I, i'm not a game dev I'm not a project manager for gaming, but I've been a project manager for web related stuff and, and for retail and commercial stuff in automotive. I guarantee you, you give me that, that give me half that, give me 200 million. I guarantee you I'll get you a game in like in less than five, well, about five years, let's say, and it will definitely do better than what Concord did. Uh, and, and, you know, it's short lifetime. So it, it just feels like they, I, I won't say they don't know what they're doing, but it, it, it almost feels like the, in the games as a service realm, yeah, they really don't know what they're doing. And, and maybe it's for the best that they go back to their old ways of single player games, but we see that that's, that's an expensive road. And even now they're, they're taking the shortcut with doing these remasters, which I don't know, maybe it's just me. I, I feel anything that's like less than five years old or, or had a re-release before for PC where 
in all honesty, that should be as good as it gets unless you now you're using, you know, I guess uh, Horizon Forbidden West assets with the glowing faces uh, in, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn. I don't think that needs a, a remaster. I mean, I guess all the people that's been buying these remasters kind of told Sony, oh, yeah, this works. Yeah, we can we can recoup some of that four hundred million dollars with these remakes. Yeah, we could get these turned out in like two years or less and, you know, get some of that cash back. But it's like, I don't know. I I, I really wish they come to the table and show, hey, Ghost of Tsushima uh, 2 or whatever they decide to name it. I don't think it'll be Ghost of Tsushima. It'll be like Ghost of Another Island kind of thing or or they'll just give it a, a totally different name, but it'll be basically the second, you know, title in that series. I, I would love to see what Corey Barlog, his rumored, you know, sci-fi game Space that he's game. been working yeah. on. Yep. So like that needs to be like, if it's, unless it's just like BS rumors, <laughs> that needs to be something that even if they just show concept art, because apparently concept art is acceptable these days, uh, <laughs> they do need to at least show that much at this point, because it, it just feels like, I, I bought my PS5 for uh, Gran Turismo and Forbidden West. And I really haven't been excited that much more as far as anything else new. Oh, and, and Miles Morales was another one that I bought with the uh, Spider-Man remaster, which I guess I'm part of the blame with buying the Spider-Man <laughs> remaster. But it, it just feels like at this point, I, I don't know what else I'm going to be playing other than Gran Turismo on my PS5. So that, that's why I'm not even in the market for a PS5 Pro. Yep. Because, yes, while they have the ray tracing on track, finally, for the PS5 Pro for Gran Turismo, I'm not spending $700 to do that. I would just rather them put it on PC, which rumor has it that might be the next one. Although, considering how not well uh, Ragnarok did, we'll, we'll see if that winds up happening. But... It, it just feels like Sony is a chicken with his head chopped off kind of thing right now. And I, I don't, I've never seen Sony this, this way. Like even during PS3 era, Sony wasn't like this. Even when they were all full of themselves saying, get a second job to buy your PS3. They weren't this arrogant. They weren't this discombobulated is about the best way to put it. I, I, I just don't know. $400 million, I guess, change them in, in a way that we weren't expecting. And now they've kind of either lost their soul or lost their way to some extent, but we'll see. I'm, I'm pretty sure people will clip that and be like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just an X bot. But yeah. Okay. Whatever. But I, I'm, I'm seeing more and more PlayStation guys now starting to come to the realization that no roadmap. What, what, what the F are they doing over there? Kind of thing. Like it's, it's been four years. You, you should have at least something more to show than a new console at this point. 